going you guys Michael Shamblum here today we are going to be using my favorite tool in Lightroom the range mask and the range mask allows you to get very selective with your masking your brushing using radial gradients using lean linear gradients is that what it's called linear gradients and it's just an amazing tool that I use on a daily basis when I'm editing my photography the range mask allows you to select on an area of the image based on luminance value or based on color. I have a few examples here and let's just dive straight into this. So this is a nice waterfall photograph. I've done a little bit of raw editing here, so applied some contrast and things like that. Um, but I notice this waterfall area, um, it's a little bright, so maybe we could tone that down, and then maybe we could pull up some of the shadows in here. But rather than just using a brush, I'm going to use a brush and a range mask. Um, if you have any selections that auto default here, just go ahead and double tap effect, and that will reset anything you have. Uh, show selected mask overlay, and I'm just gonna brush along the waterfall a little bit. So I'm going to brush along these brighter areas around the waterfall and maybe right here as well. Now let's pull that mask off and just to show you what this looks like without the range mask, I'm going to pull the exposure down. And so of course it does affect the highlights. The problem is it's also taking down our shadows and that is not what we want. So, in order to apply the range mask, we're going to go down here towards the bottom, select on luminance, show luminance mask, and now it's showing us that mask that we had before. Now, if I pull down on this side, I'm going to only be affecting the shadow area down here on the left side. If I do the opposite, we're only going to be masking out the highlights. And you can see how that red area, anything in red is what we're masking, that is starting to get pulled out of the shadows as we bring this slider up. So right about there is good. You can also change the smoothness value on here. And we could even brush a little bit more now that we have that mask applied. Brush a little bit more here in the highlights. And now let's turn Show Luminance Mask off and let's try that again with the exposure. So as you can see here, once we pull that exposure down, it's affecting all of the highlights in the photograph, but not those shadow areas. So it's much more selective. And if we want to be even more selective with the range mask, we can, rather than use the exposure slider, we can pull down the highlight slider and pull down a little bit of the whites to bring those brighter highlights up and really make sure we're not affecting the shadows. So this darker area right here, um, let's go ahead and just bring that up using the same technique of a range mask. This time actually let's use a radial filter for this. So I'm gonna click and drag my radial filter and of course with the radial filter, anything inside the circle is going to be affected and not what's outside or vice versa, anything outside the circle and not what's inside. Um, and in order to change that, you just click invert right here on the panel. So let's go ahead and just pull this exposure up. And of course it's affecting what's on the outside of the circle. So I'm gonna click invert. And now we can see everything inside this circle is being brightened. But of course, it's brightening up our highlights rather than just the shadows. So going over to Arrange Mask, Luminance, Show Luminance Mask. Of course, right now it's just a simple red circle. But let's pull this slider down. And as you can see, now that red is only affecting those darker areas and it's getting pulled out of the highlights. So let's click this off again. And as you can see here, now that exposure slider is not messing around with our highlights. But again, to be even more selective with this slider, rather than play around just with the exposure, we can use the shadows, pull the shadows up, and some of the blacks. So again, this is just a super powerful tool for any sort of selections, brushing, 
um, it, it's, it just works great. Now, this doesn't just work for luminance, this also works for color. So I've got this photograph right here that I took on the beach in San Francisco, and it's got some really nice red glow coming through here. So let's say, as an example, I wanted to really boost the saturation and maybe some of the contrast here in the reds of the photograph. All right, so we're just gonna take a linear gradient. We're gonna pull down this gradient right here. And let's head down to range mask, go to this time color. And in order to engage a color in your range mask, you just use this eyedropper tool. Let's place that on red. And if we show selected mask, now we can see that mask is only selecting that red area in the sky. And of course, we could change the amount if we want to. Let's turn the mask off. And with this, I'm just going to increase the contrast and maybe pop the saturation a little bit. And as you can see there, it's only affecting those reds in the sky. Let's use another gradient here. I'm going to this time select from the water. So what I'm going to try and do here is select those blue tones in the water and boost those highlights up. So let's pop back over to range mask, head over to color, use the eyedropper tool once again. I'm going to select one of these blue colors in here. Let's see what we're masking. All right, so that looks good right there. And we can go ahead and just turn the amount down for this one. And if we pop up the exposure, you can see here, it's only going to affect those tones. So again, color uh, range masks are also really helpful. I, I found myself using more of the luminance rather than the color, to be honest. Color does do a great job, but you also do have your uh, HSL sliders down at the bottom, which kind of do a similar effect. So I found luminance to be a little bit more helpful in this case. Um, now, as our third example, this is the last example, here's a night sky photograph. Um, so before to do night sky photography, I would have to do a lot of masking in Photoshop with the shadows here, because if we wanted to bring up these silhouettes, we would have to do it very selectively in Photoshop, or we could just use the brush tool right here see what that brush looks like and uh, maybe bring up the shadows a little bit and bring up the blacks but as you can see here it still does affect the sky quite a bit so again with the luminance mask this is super powerful because the contrast between night sky images when you have that really dark foreground and that really bright sky it's so easy for Lightroom to see which areas of the photograph are darker and brighter and use the range mask to select those areas. Um, so let's look at the mask. And we just want to be affecting the shadows, so we're going to pull this down. And even with just that quick swipe, I mean, look at how good of a job it did selecting all of these Joshua trees and the foreground. And of course, you can play around more with the smoothness. We could even take this down further. Okay. Pop that off. And again, bring up those shadows and bring up the blacks. And it doesn't affect any part of the sky. Super selective. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is my absolute favorite tool in Lightroom for selecting and masking. It's honestly, it's really impressive the algorithm they put into this tool. You'll notice the dog got bored, decided to leave. That's what happens when you film tutorials. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful for you. Hope you learned something from it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel with the little bell notification. I don't really know what that means, but somebody told me to say it. Uh, and <laughs> go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll be releasing a bunch of new tutorials in the future, vlogs, all sorts of stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, oh, 
And if you have any suggestions of tutorials you might like to see in the future, please let me know because I'm, I'm really trying to um, make videos that are going to be beneficial for you guys. And if there's anything specific that a lot of people want to see, I want to make sure that's covered in a future tutorial. All right. Again, thank you. And I'll see you in the next one.